If we go to the next slide, we move in to the main aspect of our seminar today. The first concept that we want to clarify is the concept of istighatha, calling upon someone for aid. Istighatha is mentioned in the Quran, though they would have you to believe that it has nothing to do with the Quran and the Sunnah. If you read the verse of the Quran in Surah Al-Qasas, فَاسْتَغَاثَهُ الَّذِي مِنْ شِعَتِهِ عَلَى الَّذِي مِنْ عَدُوِّهِ And his Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam's countrymen sought his help فَاسْتَغَاثَهُ against his enemy. When Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam, we know he was brought up in the house of Fir'aun. He was brought up in the house of Fir'aun and he was given a high position in Egyptian society one day. Someone from Banu Israel saw Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam he needed help against someone attacking him. So he asked Sayyidina Musa السلام, for help. In the Quran it says, فَاسْتَغَاثَهُ What does istighatha mean? In the tafsir of Zad al-Masir, fi ilm al-tafsir of Sayyidina al-Imam al-Hafid, Ibn al-Jawzi, rahmatullah, one of the great ulama of Ahl sunnah wal jamaah one of the huffad of hadith, he says, فَاسْتَغَاثَهُ In the ayah means, فَاسْتَنْصَرَهُ He sought his help. So those who accused the Sunnah wal Jama'ah of doing istighatha, why did this man ask Sayyidina Musa السلام, for help? Why didn't he ask Allah for help? That's what they would be saying now. Why is he not asking Allah for help? Why does he ask Sayyidina Musa السلام, for help? Why does Sayyidina Musa السلام, help him knowing that he's asking him for help, that he should be asking Allah? This is the kind of questions in those diseased minds they accuse the Sunnah wal Jama'ah of shirk. Istighatha then is the asking of help from another. It is not shit to seek help from creation whilst fully recognizing that creation is simply a means and completely dependent on Allah and that in reality it is the help of Allah that is being sought. Because nothing in this creation moves. There is no haraka. We say la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al al adim. There is no might, no power save with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The power and might of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he asked Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam for help, he full well knows the help is coming from Allah. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam has been given power by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not shirk. Here it is, istighatha mentioned within the Quran. فَاسْتَغَاثَهُ الَّذِي مِنْ شِعَتِهِ عَلَى الَّذِي مِنْ عَدُوِهِ if we now move to the next slide, istighatha in the light of the sunnah of Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the sahih hadith, in sahih al-Bukhari, al-Abdillah ibn Umar radiyallahu tabaraka wa ta'ala anhu annahu qal, qal al-Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna al-shamsa tadnu yawm al-qiyamah, hatta yablugh al-araq nisf al-udhuni, fadaynahum kathalika istighathu bi Adama alayhi salam, thumma bi Musa alayhi salam, ثُمَّ بِسَيِّدِنَا مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَيَشْفَعُ In this hadith, truly the sun shall draw so near on the day of judgment. The Rawi is who? Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه. The book is Sahih al-Bukhari. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says, Truly the sun shall draw so near on the day of judgment that the sweat shall reach to the mid-air. Whereupon they shall ask help. استغاثوا here the word is istaghathu mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the lips of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. From Sayyiduna Adam alaihi salam they would ask help. Then from Sayyiduna Musa alaihi salam, each Prophet will say he cannot take this; it is not his right. Each Prophet will fear that day about his own self, but Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be thinking about the entire Ummah. They will turn from Prophet to Prophet until they come to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he will intercede. On that day, even the Munkirun, those who deny istighatha, will be forced to do istighatha. They too will be part of the people running from Prophet to Prophet. The whole of creation will be running Prophet to Prophet. What will they be doing? They will be doing istighatha. Why do, they, why do they not turn to Allah? The Munkirun say, we hear them saying, why do they not turn to Allah? It is a day of judgment. 
Perhaps they say now, okay, it's all, it's all right to do istighatha on the Day of Judgment. It's shirk to do in the dunya. A'udhu <laughs> billah. What funny, what funny logic these people have. What strange logic. We say to them, you who deny istighatha, you will be doing istighatha yourselves on the Day of Judgment. You do not accept the level of the rank of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the dunya, you will be forced to recognize his rank on the Day of Judgment. Sayyidi al-Imam Ahmad al-Ridha Khan rahmatullah alayhi, the Mujaddid of the 14th Hijri century, in his poetic words in praise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions that on that day, in the Maidan of Hashar, in the plain of Hashar, the true rank of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be seen for all. For the one who denies it in this dunya, and the, for, one, for the one who accepts it in the dunya, they will all see it. The whole of creation, the believers and the disbelievers, We'll see it. Subhanallah. This is the evidence of Sahih al-Bukhari. If we go to the next slide, proving that istighatha is not shirk in the Sahih of al-Bukhari again, we have the statement of Sayyiduna, Sayyiduna Hajar alayhi salam the wife of Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salam She says, فَقَالَتْ قَدْ أَسْمَعْتَ إِنْ كَانَ عِنْدَكَ غَوَاثٌ فَإِذَا هِيَ بِالْمَلَكِ عِنْدَ مَوْضِعَ زَمْزَمْ in the Maudi Zamzam. It is mentioned regarding the story of Sayyidatuna Hajar alayhi salam, as we know, and those who have, been, who have been on Hajj have been fortunate to do the Sa'i of Safa and Marwah. And may Allah give us all the opportunity to go on Hajj and do Ziyara of Sayyidatuna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We hear the Munkirun saying, Ziyara of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not allowed. It is bid'ah, it is shirk. We do not lend an ear to them, we lend an ear to the Adilla. Of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the ulama of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So here we see that Sayyidatuna Hajar alayhi salam, she was going from Safa and Marwa looking for water for Sayyidatuna Ismail alayhi salam. So she, she, so she hears a voice. She says, Indeed, you have made me here. If there is Gawafun, help with you, then help me. Whereupon an angel appeared at the spot of the spring of Zamza. What did she say? In kana indaka gawathun. She hears a voice. She says, In kana indaka gawathun. If there is help with you, what do the munkirun say, those who deny? She should ask Allah. Na'udhu billah, the mother of Sayyidina, Is Sayyidina, Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam. The wife of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. She does not know Tawheed. You're going to teach her Tawheed? If you go back to the previous slide, Na'udhu Billah, you're going to teach the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Tawheed when he's telling you that the whole of creation will be doing istighatha by the Anbiya? Who should we follow? The whispers or the haqq from Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Qur'an. So seeking help with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If we look here, we seek help from everyone every day. If you need a hand to carry your shopping, you turn to someone and ask them for help. Don't shirk. Is it shirk? Asking for help from other than Allah shows you the shallow mentality of some people out there. Seeking help with the Prophet wasallam is only a means of imploring Allah for the sake of his rank and his honor with Allah. The one doing the asking seeks from the one ask, asked that he assign him aid, ghawath, or ghawth, sorry, from that which he has been given by Allah. The Prophet ﷺ has been given fawail which cannot be enumerated by us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone knows the true limits of the great qualities and strengths of the Prophet ﷺ. No human being can understand that. The Prophet ﷺ has been given these abilities when somebody turns and does istighatha with the Prophet ﷺ, in reality he is acknowledging that the Prophet ﷺ has been given great gifts by his Lord. In fact, when you do istighatha by the Prophet ﷺ, you are asking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are asking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you know nothing in this universe moves, nothing in this universe occurs except by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ is the intermediary, intermediary means between the one asking for help and the one asked in reality. Because the one asked in reality is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me ask you a question. When somebody says, for example, 
the doctors cured my son. Do we turn around and say, Mushrik? Do we say to him, Mushrik? Allah cured your son. The doctors didn't cure your son. You Mushrik, take your, take your shahada again. No, we have husn al a good opinion of a Muslim, that when those words, the doctors cured my son, leave the lips of a muwahid, one who believes in the tawheed of Allah, a mu'min, we have husn al that he means that the cure is from Allah, and the means of the cure were the doctors. This is shari, widespread in lugha, in language, that sometimes we assign something to a thing, but in reality it's a metaphorical attribution. It is metaphoric. For example, if someone says that the uh, king built the city, the king built the city, does the king go out there and lay the bricks? He doesn't. He makes his people build the city. But we attribute the building to who? The king. Because he's commanding them to do it. But the people are doing. This is what we call metaphor, a metaphor in language. It's widespread. When somebody says that, for example, the doctors cured my son. The doctors curing his son it means basically the doctors were a means, a worldly means. The cure is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The cure is from who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In reality, the doctors didn't cure him. But now if that person had i'tiqad, belief, that the doctors themselves were the source of the cure and they independently cured that person, then that person would be mushrik. But we, when we look at a mu'min, and those words leave the lips of a mu'min, a believer. We have husn al a good opinion. We understand language. And we say, the meaning is that Allah cured his son. The means that was, the means of that cure, was certain medicines and certain doctors. It is quite well that the doctors may have tried in another scenario and he would die. Because it is the will of Allah. Allah cures. But unfortunately we have people out there who have su al bad opinion of the Muslims. They do not have husn al -dhan. When the words leave the lips of a believer, immediately shirk, shirk. So in reality, help is strictly from Allah in terms of his creation, while the help from the Prophet is strictly in respect to his acquisition from Allah.